When we study the governments of ancient Greece in school, we mostly learn about the inner workings of the Greek city-state, the polis, with much of the emphasis placed on the dominant powers of the time, Athens and Sparta. But another kind of political entity was crucial for the area that characterized Western and Northern Greece, the koina, or federations. In this video, we will look at how the Greek leagues emerged, how they operated, and the different aspects they developed. Shout out to World of Tanks Blitz for sponsoring this video. This is a cross-platform, free-to-play, team-based MMO action game dedicated to fierce tank combat, which allows players to control over 370 tanks and vehicles, and has 120 million downloads. Although World of Tanks Blitz uses deep mechanics and realistic physical models in its battles, it's a fun approach to tank combat. You can play with many authentic historical tanks, but the game also offers vehicles from the Warhammer 40k and Valkyria Chronicles universes. Dynamic 7-on-7 seven -seven battles with different modes in over 25 locations makes each battle unpredictable, and the outcome depends on you and your team. You can research vehicles, change guns, set equipment, wear camouflage, tune your vehicle to match your playstyle. Celebrate Independence Day with World of Tanks Blitz. There's a unique custom hangar especially for the holiday. There's a new event, a big sale on American vehicles with discounts up to 70%, Find out more by downloading World of Tanks Blitz and checking it out for yourself. Support us by clicking the link below to download the game and get 7 days of premium account, a 3rd tier tank, the Locust, and camouflage for Independence Day. Around the 8th century BC, at the start of what historians call the Archaic Period, Greece experienced a rise in its population, which led to the emergence of numerous cities and towns and kick-started the expeditions that colonized other areas in the Mediterranean Sea, such as Illyria, southern Italy, and Cyrenaica. The cities emerged in a landscape dominated by tribal groups, subdivided into smaller tribes. Modern historians estimate that around 1,000 polis existed during the Archaic and Classical periods, and with so many autonomous centers in relatively close proximity, a number of procedures for maintaining relations emerged such as rules for alliances, ambassadors, friendship agreements, and other treaties of economic, trade, and religious natures. From these embryonic agreements between different cities and tribes, some forms of cooperation emerged in the framework of the tribal states, which held primitive councils, gathering envoys from the regional centers. Agreements laid the groundworks for the leagues and federations that would emerge in the following centuries. Before we discuss how the leagues were governed and functioned, we must premise that every league was unique in its history, formation and structure, so not all statements pertain to all of them, but we will attempt to give a general idea of how they worked. The regional or ethnic leagues, which were called koinon, meaning common or public, or sempoliteia, common constitution, developed from previous confederations in the different regions of Greece, the most important being the Thessalian, the Boeotian, the Achaean, and the Aetolian. When a polis entered a league, they would continue to keep the same institution and laws they were previously governed with. An important background which characterized all koina was that its members were all part of the same tribe, or as the Greeks called it, ethnos. The tribes and cities found common ground through a mix of similar cultures, dialects, religious sanctuaries, myths, aristocratic relations, and traditions. Many of the leagues had a common founding myth, to which all members of the Koinon could trace their origins to, and the sanctuaries important for the inhabitants of the region encouraged collaboration between local cities to organize festivities and the protection of their treasure. They also, at times, gave their citizens dual citizenship, one for the polis and another for the league. When they formed, varied greatly between regions. Some, such as the Thessalian League and the Phocian League, were established before the 5th century. Others emerged following the power vacuum caused by the decline of Athens and Sparta after the Peloponnesian War. The reason for their creation was different, either to protect themselves from an expanding power such as the Achaenanian League, which was on the forefront of the struggle against Philip of Macedon, or to secure their interests following the fall of the previous rulers, such as the Achaean League, or simply the economic benefits coming with them. To get a grasp on how widespread they were, it is estimated that around 50% of Polyus were members of a koinon, 
but not every city in an area joined the local Koinon for reasons that could include concerns about losing power and resources to their rivals. The government of the Koina mirrored the compositions of the polyus that formed them. The most important of the institutions was the Federal Ecclesia, or Assembly. In most of the leagues, the common assembly was held in only one city, such as Thebes for the Boeotian League or Olynthus for the Chalcidian League. These cities effectively acquired the unofficial status of capital of the league, especially if the voting was direct, as the inhabitants of the city held an absolute majority in the assembly. To resolve this problem, some leagues held their assemblies in rotating cities or locations. The Akkadian League founded a new city, Megalopolis, where the assembly was held, to stop any attempt from the various polyus to dominate the league. During the second century, some leagues adopted a system of proportional representation, where cities would send a number of delegates based on their population. The idea of representation was also crucial when dealing with the executive powers, whether during war or peace. The executive branch of the Koinon was a federal council called the Buli or Synedrion, which ran the daily affairs of the League. Its members, the Archons and Strategoi, were again sent by constituents of the Leagues, and it was here the negotiations between the members took place to decide the policies the Koinon should take, although it is not clear if the members were represented proportionally or if they got one vote each. Some leagues, instead, opted to elect the highest magistrates in a federal assembly, disregarding their place of origin. The Koina also had federal law courts called Dicasteria, the boards of which were again staffed by delegates sent by the members. To help organize the league's resources and the votes, several leagues divided their territories into subdivisions, with the most common denotations being Meros or Telos, meaning division and district. The Telos was an autonomous subdivision with its own organs, which had previously been another small centre later integrated into the League. The Meros instead was much more common and was artificially created by the Leagues, and were used to calculate taxation and economic contributions due to the League. They were also used for recruitment for the Federal Army. Each district would send a contingent, the size of which was based on the population of the Meros. The polyus usually restricted the right to own land to its citizens and a few other benefactors, and taxes were levied on both imports and exports. With the rise of the coiner, we find an attempt to integrate the many fractured local economies by expanding the rights of citizens of the Federation to own land in their territory and by easing commerce between the members, granting them easier access to the judiciary. There were a few attempts at introducing a common taxation policy, but most important was the introduction of common weights, measures and coins for exchanges. We find numerous examples of common coinage. In some leagues, each city had its own mint, producing coins with the city's name on, but following the guidelines set by agreements, while in the more centralized leagues such as the Boeotian and Thebes, all coins came from the same mint. This gave the leagues the advantage of choosing the money supply in its region, and it encouraged more commerce within its border, easing tax collection and the payment of troops. Some of them also had the right to limit exports and imports on certain goods, such as grain and iron. One of the most important forms of revenue for the coiner were the customs duties imposed at harbours and ports, which were collected by the league and not the polyes, since they were the most lucrative and would have disproportionately favoured the maritime cities over landlocked ones. A proportional tax based on the population was also levied, probably to keep the smaller polyes loyal to the Federation. We do not have hard evidence on how the funds were used, but from the historian Polybius, we know that in some instances they were used to hire mercenaries. With the colonization of different parts of the Mediterranean Sea, the Greek polyus also exported the idea of the koinon to other regions such as Asia Minor, Cyrenaica, and most importantly, Magna Graecia. Here the Italiote League was formed, which included most of the Greek city-states of the area. It was not uncommon for a league to have one of its major members reach a prominent position. 
when it could exercise its power through military, diplomatic or economic means over the other members, we have the hegemony of that city over the rest of the League. The word comes from hegemonia, meaning authority, and we find numerous examples in history such as Sparta, Athens and Thebes. When the League was strong enough, this could translate into hegemony over most of the Greek world. Another type of federation which had a stronger emphasis on religion was the Amphictyones. These were associations of polyis and tribes that were located around a sanctuary, which originated festivals and common cults, and required protection and management of common concerns, although it did not oblige its members to defend each other. The most important Amphictyony was the Pilaia Delphic, centered around the two sanctuaries of Demeter at Anthela and of Apollo at Delphi. The responsibility of the members was the protection of the sanctuaries, supervision of its administration, caretaking of the structures, and the organization of festivals such as the Pythian Games held every four years. The famous oracle in Delphi had itself an important role, managing to become independent from the city of Chrysa during the First Sacred War, which ended with the destruction of the latter. When it managed to keep its autonomy, the oracle promoted peace between the members and gave advice on colonization matters, but various Greek cities attempted to gain influence over it, and the struggle for influence would intermittently spark the sacred wars. Another Amphictyones was the original Delian League, based on the oracle of Apollo on the island of Delos. The sanctuary had great importance for the Ionians inhabiting the islands of the Aegean Sea. Following the First Persian War, Athens established the famous Delian League using the pre-existing religious network as a frame for it, with the goal of fending off Persian influence. The importance of the League was based on its naval power, which was used to measure the contribution of a member, which each had a vote in the common assembly. It would however not take long before Athens would exercise its hegemonic power over the other members of the League moving the treasury from Delos to Athens in 454 BC, and using the League's resources to wage war against Sparta, using its powers to coerce others to join them even if they did not wish to do so, as the famous episode of the Siege of Melos recounted by Thucydides demonstrates. The League would be disbanded after Athens's loss in the Peloponnesian War, while Delos continued to keep its importance as a sanctuary. Speaking of Athens, Using its power, this city-state managed to create something similar to what we would call a nation-state. In 508 BC, legislator Cleisthenes gave all free men of the region of Attica Athenian citizenship, and this region was incorporated into one polis by means of sophisticated political and territorial organization. The myth tells us that it was the hero founder of Athens, Theseus, who performed Sinoikism, which can be translated from Greek as dwelling together in the same house, and unified Attica, but the historical records attribute the creation of a fully integrated region state, as Greg Anderson calls it, to Cleisthenes. Another type of relationship we find was the military alliance, the Semachiae. The most famous of these was the Peloponnesian League led by Sparta. In its early history, the city of Sparta had subjugated most of its neighbours, such as Messenia, holding them in a state of slavery. After helping to instate an oligarchic government in Corinth and a defeat to Tegea in the first half of the 5th century, the Spartans shifted from a policy of conquest to one of bilateral agreements. These loose alliances would develop into a league composed both of many but not all polyis in the Peloponnese and a number of external cities such as Megara and Aegina. The alliances were considered perpetual and they were not obliged to help each other, although micro-alliances between the members did form at times. By the Peloponnesian War, the Spartans, being the strongest city in the League, held hegemony over its other members. The structure of command was by the time formalized. In a council with representatives of the Allies, the Spartans would listen to the concerns of its members and discuss the actions to take. These were voted on by the Spartan assembly, and the results were forwarded again to the members which would confirm the actions by vote. 
In military affairs, the members would send contingents to accompany the Spartan army, but all operations were commanded by a commander of the hegemonic city. At the start of the 4th century and following the Peloponnesian War, Sparta would become more obsessed with controlling its allies as the shrinking population threatened its hegemony, which sparked challenges to its leadership and caused the collapse of the League by 365 BC. Another example of Symmachiae was the Second Delian League, established by Athens in the 380s to contrast Spartan hegemony in Greece. In this league, we find proof of a Synedrion with magistrates from all the members of the alliance and independent from the Athenian government. The league would quickly disappear, as the rise of Thebes overshadowed Athens, who instead allied with Sparta, rendering the league obsolete. Following the expansion of Philip II of Macedon into Greece, the Macedonians created the Corinthian League to tap the resources and military capabilities of the Greek city-states. To keep the members under control, the position of Hegemon was created, giving the Macedonian rulers the right to rule the Greek city-states. After the death of Alexander the Great, the League disestablished, but continued to be a framework for the relations between Macedon and the other Greek states. The ethnic federations would continue to be relevant until the conquest of the Romans. During the 3rd and 2nd century, the Aetolian League expanded its influence to most of central Greece, and the Achaean League dominated most of the Peloponnese. The historian Polybius was a son of a strategos of the Achaean League, and participated himself in its administration, leaving information about the system of the Koinon in his works, which have been crucial to understanding how the federations worked. In the aftermath of the first two Macedonian wars, Rome became the hegemonic force in Greece, rivaling that of Macedon, establishing alliances with some of the local leagues and city-states. Greek autonomy came to an end after the annexation of Macedon and the destruction of Corinth in 148 BC, where the Roman Republic took over mainland Greece. Following this annexation, the leagues lost their functions and slowly faded away from history. Celebrate Independence Day with World of Tanks Blitz with a unique custom hangar for the holiday. There's a new event, a big sale on American vehicles with discounts up to 70%. Find out more by downloading World of Tanks Blitz and checking it out for yourself. Support us by clicking the link below to download the game and get 7 days of premium account, a first tier tank for Locust and camouflage for Independence Day. We are planning to make more videos on the Hellenic world, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. We would like to express our gratitude to our Patreon supporters and channel members who make the creation of our videos possible. Now you can also support us by buying our merchandise via the link in the description. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.